titles, might just be in the Fortune food system, to have it broad, but I also have now this um, subtitle somehow here for campaign with regards to why we have towards smart, sustainable, community supported ag. So this is um, a presentation that somehow um, will present what is now or what has happened, but we attempt to be uh, more futuristic. So we have agriculture as an interdisciplinary field, and we have it as an integrated system, very complex, as, as mentioned by Dr. Paul and Lisa earlier. But we have different practices all over the world. But we, we need more attention in terms of development of innovative, innovative approaches suitable to different areas and different conditions. We have population and con consumption growth increase and uh, global demand for food, land, water, energy, and fishing resources. So I'd like us not to be restricted with the traditional view of what agriculture is, that it is tied to food systems, because I want us to be much more concerned to the environment as well, as well as to human needs. So as more people reside in urban areas, accompanied by threats of reducing agriculture land in rural areas, the pressures of climate change, food security, environment, human health, and safety needs to be addressed. So, sabi nga eh, ang bayan ko dun sa, sa kanta eh, ano dyan, ginto at bulaklak. We have looked at agriculture as a, as a means to live for most of our people. Most of the farmers are in poverty. Kung baga para nang sa, let's accept it, it's a form of modern slavery. They are the one toiling the land, working for us to have food, and the society has looked as agriculture more for the money, but not, not, not much for the living that comes with it. So let's look at beyond money, beyond the you know, for, for this presentation. I'd like us to look at concepts, different components, and also select models from different parts of the Philippines, Southeast Asia, and the United States that can be considered for agriculture and food system of the future. We can learn from classic, classic tested, you know, whether it's in a very simple form to, uh, to very complex systems that also includes crop production, but as I said, we'd like to go beyond crop or food production, because we need to look at service-oriented and divorce, as well as industry linkages. That's one of the weaknesses of the Philippine agriculture. Somehow, government is focused on the crop statistics and the gross domestic product contribution, not the whole value chain on how the product that comes from the farm end up to consumer locally or abroad. So, community supported agriculture, as well as global competitiveness, as a range of targets, can be achieved both for urban and rural areas, needing focus that includes terrestrial lands. Aquatic areas and atmosphere are irritating for our sustenance. So, here in the Philippines, the government tried to separate agriculture with that of the environment and natural resources. Pero, ilan na lang natin natin natural resources? How much of the forest remain? Because agriculture is also one industry that actually just destroys the environment. So for our seminar goals, I'd like us to share ideas, experience, and propose solutions appropriate for city conditions or areas to improve farm productivity, food availability, human health, environmental sustainability. And we also would like to envision possible areas for future research and development. It may not be our generation who solve all our problems, but we hope some people from the room can contribute ideas and maybe plan on working some aspects that may be mentioned even a bit, you not know, from our talk today. So in rural and urban agriculture are totally different scenario. Okay. Much to our um, complicated Filipino society, most, most people would really want to move to the cities. No? Napabayaan ang, ano, ang rural areas. We need 
need massive rural transformation. We need to decongest much of our urban areas, especially the Metro Manila. No? So, mag-click ba sila ng case? Kasi nandito yung, yung problema na we know in our crop modeling um, discussion earlier that you need water, you need light, you need air, no? For us to have the plant processes undergo. Eh, ano nangyayari? We have dirty air, we have dirty water, we have dirty soil. So what kind of food are we going to produce? What kind of product are we going to produce if we keep on doing that? So even for urban areas, do we just rely no, with the imported flour, the imported rice, the imported soy, assuming that there's already tarification? I, I, I know why it happens, that, that we need to recognize that there's global trade. But in reality, the Philippines is an archipelago we cannot just depend on other races to feed our nation. We have to feed our own people. So, it's not actually easy to study agriculture without understanding the environment. And we have different types of environment. Lowland, highland, deepland. Different types of water, not even our riverways. Um, I'm happy to have to to have found some students from different parts of the country this semester. And I'm also happy to, to have found some who come from big cities who are now engaged or are interested to do agriculture. So, yun siguro yung ano, one, uh, one challenge is how do we convince more from the cities to understand what agriculture is. So, what is smart sustainable agriculture? I try to fuse the concepts um, I learned from the word smart and I learned from the word sustainability or sustainable. Both words I think are now uh, well understood by a lot of people, but as I, in my understanding in this presentation, I'd like to integrate innovative and classic present approaches and strategies to respond to the needs of the times and the challenges of the future. You know, uh, you know uh, I can, um, Goal. Iba iba kasi yung cases, iba iba yung scenario. So how do you come up with solutions or how do you understand how to solve the problems? With climate smart agriculture, which is a banner thing, the recent decade, there's already an FAO definition of what climate smart agriculture is. There's a recent USAID uh, farmer's manual produced locally in the Philippines, mainly for the Bicot region. What are the things the farmers need to know to be kind of smart? No? There's already a big manual on that. So, but I'd like us to link it with the concept of smart, sustainable cities. Because the sa bagong um, uh, developmental goals, they now recognize that there are smart cities, and we have cities in the Philippines who aim to be considered as smart cities. But we have a lot of work to do with regards to that. So, what happens is the fusion of your information communication system as well as social and cultural aspects beyond the usual biological and environmental consideration in agricultural systems and industry changes the scenario. So, it's not only money, we have to consider the culture and the race, especially that we also have indigenous Filipinos and we also have foreigners who are uh, staying and living in our land. With regards to the expanded new urban agriculture sector, which should really be fast-track, we need to look at specialty products, services, and activities that can make the system more vibrant, resilient, sustainable, human health environmental friendly. I'm just repeating the words because that's the real scenario that we need to go through. Because when you buy, let's say, a kilo of talong, and it came from, and you are in Quezon City, but it came from Tanawa and Batangas. Calculate the amount of fuel no, that was entailed for it from production to transport. The reality is you have lots of land in Quezon City where you can plant eggplant. So why buy? And then you have a lot of the resident in the urban area who doesn't have a good livelihood. So, Good thing is we have now new leaders who are much open to supporting urban agriculture in different 
parts of the Philippines. And it has started in uh, select areas of those Philippines. So just to look at the recent uh, smart city concept and what the air soldier such um, tables and what drives smart cities. So I can concept sa akin yung smart agriculture or smart sustainable path combines the different sectors. You only you don't only have a smart farm, you also have smart gardens, smart markets, you have smart farmers and smart gardeners. Knowledge based siya, experience based siya. No, hindi lang siya climate smart. And then this also came no power pero zero hunger, good health and well-being. Okay? Kasama tayo dyan sa agriculture, yung clean water. Life on that, life with water, climate action, related dyan sa smart sustainable agriculture. Sadly, We've become a society that has been blinded by many things and we don't anymore remember that we breathe because we have plants around us. So we look at mangoes just for the fruit or sometimes we have people who, who are plant blind. Hindi na nila nakikita, hindi na nila nakapansin, importante si Puno. So I like the mango tree not just as the source of the fruit, but it actually provides shade, no? It can give you lumber. Can even get some firewood if, if you need some branches, but it's actually a powerful, powerful carbon sequestration living machine, and we have tons of paper supporting that. So don't be sad if you see a mango tree that's just standing there with that much growth, but it's actually doing a big part, especially answering to what we do in polluting the environment. Okay. And it's just one, but we have lots of other trees. That does similar, no? but in varying, varying scales. So Apollo mentioned why he came. I was actually in the Philippines during Yolanda. And actually, I tell you, it was really hard. It was so sad to see Yolanda the aftermath. Because I did spend Christmas in, in uh, Leyte, no? that year when Yolanda struck. I didn't imagine that you could see such destruction. Para talaga siya end of the world. <laughs> Imagine you're driving, driving uh, over hundreds of kilometers, pero wala, putol-putol yung mga puno. But destruct destruction talaga, massive destruction. So after having that as Yolanda, because we had family who survived the, the huge accident, but we also had uh, resources we tapped from, from our small network. I knew that this would happen again. And having experienced hunger for two weeks, there were many people had no rice for two weeks. They didn't even have potable water for many, many days. So, so having experienced that, and then they came to Marawi, and they are also expecting more typhoons and more, more floodings, I think our generation have uh, has been resilient enough because we, we experienced, like as a child, I remember having lots of brownouts, having time that there's food ration, no? Um, but your generation, I think, are so much pumper that food now comes to your desk if you want to order, no? I think it's good to be alive, this generation, but we also should be prepared for the worst. And as in the agriculture and the science and engineering field has a lot of things to do to learn more about what's happening. So let's not look far, but we found this when we were in Mahay Hai. Okay. Grabe. Mahal yung ano, no? mahal yung... Mahal yung kamalas sa baba, tapos tignan nag-oversupply sila doon because they actually have a tie-up with a big uh, supermarket brand. So they only buy very specific ripeness of tomato for it to last in the supermarket. And I saw tons of tomatoes being dumped. 
and how I wish that because I know how to make ketchup, I know how to make you know dry tomatoes. It's like why can't they make it into that? No? So why is there um this farming, you know, disconnect of our farming communities with that of simple community or kitchen processing? And it's so near, it's not far. And there um and it happened again. Because again, uh, lately that they are throwing lots of um, tomatoes and so many other vegetables. So that's the problem in agriculture. We have seasonal uh, production. There are products that are expensive, but there are times that we have big harvest and the price goes down. And farmers don't want anymore to pick the produce. Now I'd like to introduce you to the pleasure garden concept. The agricultural history is long. I mean, we study them in the lecture, in class, no? but, but come to think of it, uh, developing farms and gardens is tied to humanity's survival. So, I like what I read with what Xenophon uh, wrote, discussing about the idea of the pleasure garden. Um, I was here the other week. Yeah, last week when Senator Vidal discussed about community gardens and gardens in the village, and she was questioning the why are the rich people making the gardens and not the poor ones who need to make, to produce the food or the vegetables. So then it should be, you know, you can't blame rich people if they want to make gardens because it's time to live well. It's time to have a pleasure, you know, a good day if you have you're surrounded by plants, if you're surrounded by beautiful things, if you're surrounded by things you can eat, okay? So there he chose the word uh, paradisos. It means enclosure, but it's actually a word, the pleasure in the garden concept is tied to the word paradise. No? So the evolution of words pa paradiso, paradise. So associated garden tosa so understanding of the paradise of the diso sa uh, spiritual na para bang magkaantay ka bang mamatay makarating sa langit no 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 uh, as a whole of the I do believe that there's heaven on earth hindi ko na kailangan mamatay pa para makarating sa pagkakaroon ng masaya no magandang buhay masaya po oras maganda pa so it just so happened that I'm in horticulture, although horticulture by definition uh, includes culture of fruits, vegetables, and ornamentals. In reality, a garden is not just confined to this crop grow. We have different types of crops that we can grow in a garden. Okay. And in point one forty and one nine one, we'll discuss more of the garden concept, but. Usually people are confused when I say garden. There's a wide uh, types of places where plants are grown, and so with other animals and other biologicals, from small uh, or, um, minor organisms to big, we actually, there are people who actually debate. For Pabayan or garden, there's actually a national group already who agree that even a memorial park is considered a garden. Okay. It's not necessarily just a private place, like a public park is a garden. And we have actually places like Singapore as a city state, and it considers itself as a, city, city, um, a country that is in a garden or a garden state. So we have a fortune of studying at Cornell and there we had huge tracts of area that are planted. And there's natural areas with native plants, and then you also have introduced plants. Trees, no big lawns, no and come to think of it, what I miss is the fall, you know, where you have leaves in essence. It is amazing how they're able to maintain such a huge area. But it's actually not just students and staff who keep the whole botanic garden working. You have a lot of volunteers who do the work. And how, how I wish we can implement that. Because sometimes it's so sad that you see the 
damdam mo, o kaya mga lugar na pwede na mga pagtanimahan na pwede niya pagkain, eh hindi nagagamit. Because food is quite expensive where we are. Sabi nila, no, pang presyong taga-ili daw yung presyo ng commodity. And it is true, because if you go to Alamba, the price of the vegetable are much cheaper compared to the price of commodities in Los Manos. So think na tayo yung agricultural area. Here's an example of a man-made area. Alam mo, natural, no? Pero hindi. It's, it's actually started. Uh, it's planted in land. And part of the corner plantations, the old name, tinanggal na nila yung historic na tayo to slavery kasi plantations, kaya nga yung Cornell Botanical Gardens na yung name, no? Meron siyang um, modern welcome center that's environmentally friendly. Meron, meron na siyang gold uh, LEED, yung Leadership in Energy Environmental Design Award, because you have their water use to control temperature, no? you have the design properly oriented with the uh, orientation of the sun, you know? So, and different features, and sustainable features that the raw materials used are mostly coming from near the area where it was built, no? such as that. I'm not sure if you can really have a pair of it, because the Philippines has a green architecture or green design award as well, if we have any, because I don't think I'm too happy with the types of building I'm seeing around, na parang puro masyadong concrete, no? So, because we have to now look at how do we tie agriculture with that of living, no? and with that of the structures where we will work, where we will study. Because if we expect climate change to happen, um, one the benefit of using vegetation is you can actually cool the temperature. So we have here an example of a a green roof on top. Ano dito? 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 roof dito? Ano 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 dito? So that, that, for example, this in the roof you have actually cancer or plastic. So if you have that, it means that you have to have a nursery first to, to set up, you know, before you plant everything on top of the roof. Okay, and going back, uh, I was in the vow of a few years yeah, this was three years ago, but also last year. Um, have you heard of this, the prayer mountain in Davao City? This is part of a spiritual group in Kaya Polo Kibuloy. No? Actually, when I ended it, I was surprised. I didn't expect it to be that nice. It was really well kept, and the people who are working are actually part of the congregation. They're just giving their, giving their living allowance. They're not really paid like a salary, but they really work hard. And it's actually very, it's actually a very beautiful space. So there is a certain um, feeling of um, calm, peace, no? If you go to a place that's beautiful, no? Well kept. Hindi yung ganda na kayo, ng limon mo lang, puro kayo, at saka basura yung nakikita mo. Iba yung pakiramdam, no? Nang palibot ka ng magkagandang bakay. Iba lang sa amin, tsuma na wako natin, ano, pero kailang kaya. <laughs> okay. So, I'd like just to share that I do organize missions, uh, activities, no, in my private capacity. And one thing that I learned is that um, there's so much beauty in our environment that sometimes we feel disconnected. I accidentally knew that in my hometown, that we have sea turtles, like we have a sanctuary. As if nobody knew, you know? There's only very people who knew, but somehow that we did our medical mission, we were able to release, you know, 
this different Powhatan babies, no, na, na, ano, na, and then uh, it was actually tied to my interest in studying uh, beach gardens and coastal flora. Because the real thing is, we are not, we're just studying conventional agriculture, lowland, midland, highland, but we don't know much on how we can produce food from our coastal areas because we actually have lots of islands that are isolated that need food production. So, so we, since I'm talking about Bayanihan, it's nice to be part of a group There's who write and scholars. So we've been growing different regions in the Philippines and we give seminars, forums, trainings. And masyadong, ano, masyadong uh, hungry mga farmers natin for knowledge. Yun ang totoo. Sadly, I learned something from my undergrad and it was a long time ago. Sometimes when you teach them, <laughs> so there's really a, a gap no? between the knowledge that has that were supposed to be taught already to farmers, but they don't know. Of course there are good stories, but we don't have. So yeah, that's the joy I, I went on with uh until before the years. We spent part of it in the US, but we had the chance to rule the country, both of us. Um looking at um different scenario ang totoo lang makakalungkot kasi we are really so much left behind anybody of you been to Vietnam and Thailand recently? or Malaysia? I tell you we're like 40, 50 years behind you know, so. but we can touch up hopefully uh, with our young experience I'd like to share that their I know is not just money that we need banks or to store whatever resources we have. We need to have seed, local seed banks. We also need to have local food banks. Kasi ang mga crop, komo, crop commodities yan. International traders, the dollar trade for soybean, you can look at how much coffee is, you can look at how much rice is traded. It's a commodity, no? Mer meron siyang presyo. Why would we just allow our farmers to just set the price very low, especially if he doesn't have storage facility? But if there's government or a private sector that can provide storage facilities, why not give, why not operate it as such? The pregnancy bank, Melody Belly Food Bank. Okay, so we were able to set up a mobile kitchen during the Yolanda um, time. I, I brought actually just a van filled with what I can bring, but we actually also ordered different commodities. Na nung, uh, when my auntie was ready able to operate their grocery. So the idea then was we need to develop this uh, type of response. In my mind, since we're considered the disaster capital of the world, we should already have people that would be experts in doing disaster relief. No? The complete water, seed, uh, food, no? um, same way that we met those who came from different parts of the world who are called, uh, what's this, Doctor Without Borders? Something. Have you heard of it? They, they're roving doctors, they go where they are needed. So, at the time, I was talking to a friend who's a nutrition expert who knows about culinary and cooking, but we didn't really have a good idea on how to set up a good kitchen, no? So, pangalo ko pa rin po na magkaroon ng mobile, tapos retractable. Marami, marami akong feature sa akin wish list na sana natupad. You already saw some in the bow kasi meron na silang kitchen, pero hindi ganun yung imagine ko. Mas meron siyang flexibility na kung pwede para siyang rectal na pwede siyang lumutak sa tubig. Kasi kung ang dadaanan mo itong ilog, no? Ayaw ko, hindi siya pwede parang sasakyan lang na ordinary. Kailangan ng videos. So, are you with me imagining what we need in the future? So, we need to use more of our native materials in the dance. For a long time, what you hear in studying plants is you hear bermuda grass, blue grass, 
Everybody forgot about the Manila grass. Manila grass was discovered by the Americans here in the Philippines when they were searching for feed for horses. May mga kanala silang mga kabayo. So, it is naturally occurring to parts of Japan and other parts of Asia too, pero Zoe siya matrela is popular as Manila grass. So, when the Manila American Memorial Park was rehabilitated, Replanted, ready to go. They had to bring back the social material that, na na improve na sa US, pabalik. So medyo na increase na yung awareness ng mga tao ng social material is, but it took long. Even for the golf courses, they were more oriented to some important types. Pero palamang hindi na magbalas ng native Manila class. So now we had someone from Ayala that talked about kasi they're now moving towards ideal na 100% or 80% indigenous material. Problem is we don't have supply because there was there are not much people who planted native scrubs and native trees. But there's a demand. And they already recognize because we already have case studies of a lot of imported trees coming from Australia, coming from different parts of Asia, they can't withstand the 250 kilometers per hour winds. Pakai, no? So, now they want more trees. So, who will plant the native trees? So, we have to have a good plan. And maybe communicate with industry people what you need. This is what we plan. We have to pay attention more with water. The inadequate water. Because that's one input. Aside from CO2, you know, we need water. So, for aquatics, um, case study na yung mga, ano eh, yung mga aquatics na nasa Laguna Lake, no? Good na ngayon na pinapakinabangan na kasi meron ng mga handicraft na yung nagagawa, no? So, but, the, but, um, we also have to look at being able to have, to produce clean water using plants as well as making use of whatever no plants are available if we have fish in the pond or fish in the lake, no? So, meron ganon. So, we found a good system in Dumaguete. No? This is the Foundation University. They have this pond below and they actually have a nice garden and a nice landscape architecture uh, collection of ornamental plants, well tagged, well labeled, no? So this is this actually serves as the area where they pump the uh, the the water that's used in a hydroponic system. It's actually an aquaponic system already because you have fish growing here. In the in the rooftop, rooftop, ano nila garden. I don't. I haven't seen any like that here. Meron ba kayo sa engineering or somewhere? O may kapraso pa na pinapa? Siguro parang demo in the past, but nothing like this that exists as commercial because they sell the lettuce, they sell the, the fruit. The. So one um, growth field in, in agriculture would be agritourism. We already have the farm tourism there past. So if before the farmer is just waiting for the rice yield or, or the coconut yield, now you can, can provide services, you know, whether it just as a, for a uh, restaurant or, or also provide sleeping you know, facilities. So this is uh, called by the book, it provides bed and breakfast, you know. And then there's big agriculture venture like the Pendespinas. They started with orchids, now they have cacao, they have mushrooms, so they, have, they have different crops. But we'd like to look at product safety as well. So, we have lots of products that are handled that are not totally safe, sold in markets, walang running water, no, to kaya. Of course, it's so convenient to buy uh, vegetables packed, packed and then um, sliced, no, very quick, very cheap, but it won't pass to, you know, to health, you know, health and uh, sanitary standards. Baya actually requested us to help them in regards to organic agriculture because we're quite ahead 
in terms of policy, projects, implementation with regards to organic agriculture. So, it is very interesting to know that, um, that they are very eager to learn and implement more projects because they have recognized also the strength of having organic produce because they also get premium price for, for certain commodities. To mention, not all products are the same. The type of environment where crops are grown has an effect on the, the quality of the produce. Para rin kung di malas na ako, nakatikim lang ako sa kanya because we were there during mango season. And then I recognized why it was really considered as food for the royals because it's really very sweet and very good. Fresh. So big get ka na. Okay na si 200 pesos per kilo. Kasi pwede mo siyang bayaran 500 pesos per kilo sa sarap. Kasi wala siyang kapulat. Okay, so. Yung J.O.T.A.D.I. is in agriculture is not yet approved to the world trade internationally. Pero that's where we're going. For example, I don't mind paying premium price for, a, for let's say, rice that's grown upland. So like I buy uh, Cordillera rice. So hoping that you have cleaner water compared for rice that came from irrigation canals na polluted, no? So for smart agriculture, it's connected with sustainable ag, it's with ecological ag, organic ag, tiny smart ag, controlled environment agriculture. Precision ag, that's why we open we study modeling. There's green agriculture, so it's not just organic ag, no? Um, urban landscaping, urban agriculture, and urban horticulture. Plus agribusiness, food processing, and agri-industrialization. To me, that's important. It's about time that we have it really connected, not detached. We would like to understand subsistence as well as state of art technologies. What's the, the latest methods to conserve water and soil? How are nutrient sources derived and how do we recycle them? Information communication technologies using applications, using big data or uh, using satellite information detection systems we have them, on how we apply them to certain communities or certain farms, we have to identify. As I said, connected to architecture, urban planning, as well as agriculture, biotechnology, and biosystems engineering. For work and agriculture components, I still identify crops, livestock, aquaculture, processing, market garden, leisure and landscape, residential gardens, community gardens, private development, institutional farms, public gardens, having farm estate and community farms as component. But I can reclassify them according to four. One is urban port. Part of agriculture is having micro-container gardens, kitchen home gardening, micro-gardening and rooftop gardening. Even tiny spaces can be considered as part of the agriculture component in an urban area. Community gardening and close loop agriculture or zero waste is the way to go. Because we have cities and towns who spend a lot hauling, uh, hauling the, the basura because it's now illegal to just burn, no? Waste. Because the Metal Time Clean Air Act. So it's very costly. So that's why we have to do. We have, we have to try to simulate how it is envisioned and how we do in Mars. Okay. Aquaponics, hydroponics, aquaculture would still be part of urban north. And I name this as ecosystem ag. We have to have crop like stock integration. We already have developed system wherein they can already project how much of the different crops that are fed to animals would be needed you know, for a certain small population. We have to look at riverside areas, lakeside, beachside gardens, as I mentioned, urban farms, agroforestry, that to me should include mangrove areas, watershed, as well as having storage systems. Another emerging area would be the mushroom 
insect and animal pet farming. To me, it's about time that we have to accept that we have fellow Filipinos who eat insect for the protein, or protein source. And we have friends in Cambodia, Vietnam, who eat lots of insects. The insects eat foliage, mga vegetation, kagamihan nyo ng enkain nila. It's just that parang hindi tayo sa lahat. But I think the new generation can start learning how to eat <laughs> insects because we have lots of them. Yung animal pet farming, hindi siya traditionally accepted na agriculture kasi livestock lang. Pero I see it as an emerging field because we also have high incidence of um, illegal trade of our indigenous animals. Kung sa akin man, why not make money out of it? Why not culture them? And instead of those illegal poaching, then produce them as pets, no? Do you get what I mean? Yes. We have lots of birds, we have lots of good reptiles, we have lots of different animals. Kasi ornamentals yung ano ko eh, yung gold ko. So why not, no? Merong rarity, ano yun? Rarity element na merong price, special price points in marketing. Many also have low, mid, and high end farm. But we need more um, aspect connected to social and global market. Uh, we need more farm school, training centers, and other different areas. We don't have much farmers market. Traditional market almost all over the Philippines. We don't have much space for home farmers to train. We need more garden centers, stalls. We need regular agri fairs to promote. Uh, new emerging farmers, no award-winning products. I think access to food should be, you know, eh, should should be improved. There's nothing wrong with having food carts with clean food, locally sourced. And how I wish you will be able to learn how to make use of the uh, products that are produced. The mga foods, kasi natin naglaglag lang sa ano nalalaglag lang na dyan, nagiging basura lang, you know? So, I think, um, that's, that's one, ano, one scenario. So, having garden restaurants, trucks, and e-commerce promotion would be one, as well as a new menu the distribution system. For intensive capital requiring guard systems, these are still under urban horticulture. We have urban cleaning, green growth, and vertical green systems. I'll be showing slides, uh, quite fast after this, as well as the new field related environment of agriculture systems and phytoremediation systems. We have much problems with our mine areas, no? The NEA1, the traditional basura sa bundok, no? Yung mga isla eh, parang ni Ray. Agriculture actually has a big role in for the future generation. So this is a vertical garden developed by a botan botanist for France. So it was established more as for metal before than for climate control, but imagine if you can grow food you know, for having feeds and having improved air you know, from structures. Masakit kasi parang eyesore na yung We need to make use of vegetation. And this is interior. The first one was exterior. This is in uh, Siam Paragon. It's a high-end uh, shop in Bangkok. No? So it's very relaxing no? to be an urban area and then find greenery well maintained. And then I find the case of the Marina Gardens by the Bay in Singapore as well as the new Jewel Singapore Airport as example of integrating smart smart features to development. Because here they have itong super trees na to, it has a rainwater collection system. May storage yun sa baba, no? Then it's powered by solar power. Yung lights niya is connected, no? To, to the whole system. It has a computer control, may climate control. Um, they're able to do it. At the time of recession, at a very huge cost, why can't we? 
So, um, I haven't seen the new Jewel single for your but it's so amazing. You have to look it up by YouTube. Nakakaawal niya. Mali ang international airport. Yung hindi na yung international airport. Pag ikumpara mo siya dyan sa single for airport. What I'm telling is, if we have a vigorous uh, real estate development system that recognizes the needs for plant materials, then that's a growth point for agriculture because you need to plant shrubs, come over, no trees. If only we can have it uh, uh, planted and, and uh, connected with the farmers and the different sectors of society. One good example is Mexico City's vertical garden. It's mainly pollution control. Okay. So they have about a thousand pillars no, planted with different plants, having a special system that constructed the wall no, in vertical gardens. Yeah. There are people who are criticizing this, but somehow it's a success. No? Where it has its own weak points, but it is working. So why can't we? Pathetic Elsa. <laughs> So the big question is, why would they insist on planting terrestrial plants vertical? It's hard to water during summer. We have lots of epiphytes that can withstand drought. So it's a mistake in plant selection. As well as having aquatics you know, for those that are waterlogged. So, Yes, I uh, had a chance to visit the Green Wolf Farm at Science Sky. It's also at Bangkok. They they have their rice field, no? There's a rice area, different vegetables, ornamentals, flowers. Look it up uh, at YouTube. It's amazing. It's just so happy that we stayed at the hotel across. That's why I was able to see it when it was still quiet and have my own uh, slides. You will study it in one of mine my class. We have SM Aura as having some sort of a big move, but this is agricultural. It's not just um, farm parks area. What they do is harvest the, the vegetables and use it in the restaurants, no? So it's really a food production system. It's not just decorative or ornamental. So why can't we? There's benefits of urban ag. So, include city greening, beautification, improved nutrition, public and mental health, community food solutions, climate mitigation, community building, economic development, and empowering. There's um, an article written about benefits of environmental and ecological impacts of urban ag. This includes reduced urban heat island effect, improved local air quality, improved storm water quality, and reduced quantity. Increase pollinator population and climate mitigation services like carbon sequestration. So to me, we need to pay more attention with urban agriculture. But what about the modern agriculture development world? We already have things we call the Internet of Things. Okay. Have you heard about this? You have to look it up if you haven't. Control environment, clip irrigation, hydroponics, aquaponics. There's drone use in monitoring and pest control. So you have drones that doesn't just take photos but do the spraying very quick and much more <coughs> precise in terms of coverage. And we have mechanized farming that we're so much left behind. Um, program logistic is another that they do very well in modern agriculture. Imagine how they are able to send plain tons of tulips coming out of Holland and reaching New York at a specific hour, specific day. You know? And then there's already robotics. So you have lots of post harvest systems that are done by robots planting, uh, replanting, monitoring, grading. You know? uh, and there's mention of artificial intelligence and big data earlier. I'd like to mention Palayamanan. I got engaged with Phil Rice when they had the millionaire project, but then I'm glad they had the uh, name change. Yung sabi ko, ang hirap naman natin sabihin na magiging millionaire si Mugsasaka. 
So, kapala yung mga project came. But after looking at different farms, we had actually heritage farms that practice it way back. Bago pa mag-iero, alam na ng mga magsasakaya na meron ang fish pond, na meron ang gulay, you have perennial crops aside from rice. So, what happened? Bakit naging puro palay-palay-palay? No? So, and then we have uh, wild meat organic farms. We actually have more. And then we know that we have typhoons. So we need to develop uh, or design better modules that are affordable but also strong um, that can give good lifespan and good use of space, even if it's just for a garden for a small farm. Iba kasi yung meron hinahagol na bagyo. Tapos may hinahagol ka border. Iba yung meron greenhouse, greenhouse. Whether stick or bamboo or whatever material. With regards to aquaponics, let's learn about what they uh, did. Ancient practice in Mexico. There's such a thing as Mexican floating rivers, no? Um, akala niyo hydroponic, modern, no? Hindi, nagsimula yun dyan. No? Okay. Uh, with regards to community-supported agriculture, I'd like to mention that I experienced it first when we were in New York. A farmer can plan how many kilos of vegetables he needs for the specific number of clients. Because I will pay for the whole uh, harvest season, the family would need to pay the farmer in advance. Committed siya, no? To get weekly produce. So, mo program mo kung ilang kilong lechugas, ilang kilong naman sa pailangan mo. So you have your neighbors, your, your friends, classmates, etc. as clients. So the, the farmer is not just dependent on the trader or the market for the produce. Direct shop from farm to table. So it's called uh, weekly deliveries or subscription. We already have a new system of existing in Makati. We come from different farms of the region and Bulacan. Uh, but it's still very small. But I know that it could be expired. So, as I mentioned, there's Itaka Farmers Market as a good example. This opens um, long time, except during winter. So, you see the face of the farmer selling his or her own produce. And there's also such a thing as you pick. So, if you need Blueberries, no? strawberries, you go to the farm and pick. And pay how many kilos you want or how many bushels of apples you need. So to me, it connects people to the farm. Hindi na siya yung parang supermarket o kaya tindahan produce. So we have Sonia's Garden in Cavite as an example of a seed to play uh, system. They plant the, the vegetables and then uh, serve it, right? right away to the, uh, the clients. So it's very different from uh, lettuce that came from Bago that had to travel uh, uh, coming over. And then uh, the place where I found and grew in the Bowensens up and the up and about during those days that I found it there in Zico and in its natural habitat. In a tree, na may mula ng ganda, it's very rare. Wala pang power doon sa area. Pero ngayon ang agri-tourist area na siya. And we have the indigenous community already planting high value crops. And they also they are engaged in processing. So meron silang um, strawberry preserve, no? Meron na lang silang mga durian products, no? So, okay. I have to move fast. One way to promote eating fruits and vegetables is to engage uh, foreigners as well as those who are interested. So I had a uh, Doria tasting experience, it was amazing. You know, in my advice is farming about. So that's an example. And then one emerging field in agriculture now are agritisitals and therapeutics. So like I found this calabash or what they call as miracle food as a, as a very promising crop. You know. It's introduced but it's it's uh, very powerful with its antioxidant properties. And then for sustainable practices, we need to look at how we pack our produce. 
So this came out of the news that Thailand supermarket beaches plastic packaging for banana juice. Sa atin meron na gumamit ng abaka. No? Para dati, para magbasura lang sila ako ng abaka ngayon, di packaging mag So farm to table, very popular sa salunan. Marami doon ng farm, may restaurant. And then also in California, we have vineyards that have wineries and that also have restaurants. Here in, in the Philippines, we have this very popular uh, restaurant in Tagaytay. I consider it siya, siya yung best, no? Amazing kasi yung barrio, talagang typical Tagaytay barrio, maraming tao. But when you enter, it's like you're in a different place, in a different country. And they are very really good in using their plants. So in ornamentals, you are able to uh, an ordinary plant that is well grown and clean can be become a, a very beautiful and very pricey, you know, if, if you have it grown well. We have a lot of high value crops to grow beyond the rice. Okay. Here are examples of community gardens. So it's not just one person dealing the area. And this is the Roof deck garden in, in Dumaguete that's attached to the pond I showed earlier. So it's at the fourth floor. No, no, no building. Pump in. And it's commercially run. So, how I wish we did have that, like having segments of the ag school or, or part of campus used for commercial production. How about this? We have these types of homes now also having beetles. Okay. Beetle having turf or grass, you know, but they also have other plants. Why not put something in the body? And then with small condominiums and small living quarters, you can now look at uh, having easy to maintain plants uh, even if the owner is not on trip, then it's there with the artificial lights. These are examples of where you can this. Where orchids, ferns, and other tropicals are, are grown. There's a trend on the culture of mosses in the interior environment. As a beach garden or even in walls. So we have actually lots of mosses. Even if you go to Makili, there's a lot. Medyo ito pa nang nagpauso niya, pero kayo ano siya. Popular sa the New York. It was two decades ago when I submitted a proposal for a modern and a controlled environment greenhouse. Hindi siya nangyari, pero ngayon, hopefully, matapos na yung nasa ornamental crops. It's still different from what I envisioned, but finally, we will have a little bit of controlled environment because for a long time, we don't, like, we don't have. Even, even simple temperature control, relative humidity control, we cannot do, no? Pathetic. Now, let's go to Italy and see what they did with Bosco Vegetal. So, skyscraper na siya, yung halos pang sa hektarya, ito pa nasa lupa na lang, pero yung mga story. Oh, I'm happy na, ito na lang. We, I'd like us to imagine, kasi ito past na to eh, ito pinakita ko past, but we can pick some, no? suitable to certain conditions. But what do we do? What can simply do? With problems in energy, I can imagine having sparkling trees and shrubs. I can imagine having luminescent plants, no more lamp posts. Having cooling plants and gardens, mixed plants for steps, roofs and walls, having more water, food exchange and lifting system. It's not all about money. Uh, low cost reliable production systems, because we have lot, lots of uh, uh, Fellow citizens do not have much. We cannot go by farming. I don't need to be just in a spot, you know, just to do farming. I can go from place to place. If, if my work is done, go to another. There's bio-based crop pest management, which we should pay more attention to. So I end with this. Can we produce more food or other products from the seas or the coastal areas? Can we make agriculture respond to the environmental hazards in both urban? Rural or nasa layers. Ang ganda pa nung naging tira kung maraming sa Pilipinas. So, huwag na natin tumihan. But we need to, to look at how we will live and how we address our needs for food, feed, 
uh, although I encourage everybody to, to please eat more plant-based food source. Uh, I'm not against animals, but why would the animal eat the soybean and the corn if you can eat the soybean and the corn? <laughs> Maraming salamat.